Hi, it's Mary Beth Decker with sacredgrove.com. I am an intuitive animal communicator, and I'm lucky enough to be here with Dr. Kosen uh, from the Veterinary Holistic Center. Let me just give you a little bit of information about Dr. Kosen. Thank you for being here today. Oh, sure. <laughs> yeah. So Dr. Kosen received his Doctor of Veterinary Medicine degree from the University of Missouri College of Veterinary Medicine. He's practiced in Nor Northern Virginia ever since. After practicing general small animal medicine for several years, he was certified in veterinary acupuncture in 1990. At the time, Dr. Kosen was the only veterinarian in Northern Virginia providing this service. Over the next few years, he trained in Chinese herbal medicine and homeopathy. The majority of his appointments were people coming for holistic medicine. Dr. Kosen joined South Paws Veterinary Specialists when they first opened in Springfield in 1995, and he headed the holistic medicine department for 19 years. To increase the availability of alternative therapies for small animals, Dr. Kosen opened the Veterinary Holistic Center in Northern Springfield, and we're still in Virginia, in September of 2015. So I'm so glad to be talking to you today, Dr. Kosen. Um, Tell me, again, in your own words, what is the Veterinary Holistic Center? Well, Mary Beth, thanks for having me. I, yeah. love, I love talking about the holistic medicine and certainly about the holistic center. So the Veterinary Holistic Center is in North Springfield. We're a practice that is limited to, uh, we'll call it holistic services, holistic medicine. We don't provide any conventional medical therapies, but focus on non-conventional medicines, alternative therapies, as they're called, or holistic medicines. Predominantly um, acupuncture therapy, um, Chinese herbal medicine, homeopathy. We have two veterinary chiropractors who have joined us. We have a massage therapist and rehab specialists. And of course, we have uh, an animal communicator, yourself, uh, <laughs> who has joined us as well. Um, and to continue to look for other services to add that can um, provide care for animals that maybe we can't do from a conventional medicine side. Okay, so, and, and you, you have a new room set up. Um, I'm gonna say hydrotherapy, but I don't know if that's the right word. Well, what a, what a, how's that gonna be used? How are people and their, their animals using that? Yeah, so we've recently um, put in our new underwater treadmill, as they call them. You could also call it a water treadmill, I suppose. Um, and this is in addition to really working with mo those mobility problems in particular with the physical therapist directing that part of the practice and then our, our assistants helping out as well as we move forward. And the idea is that twofold, if you have a dog that you just wanna do more conditioning, you wanna get some strengthening, you can walk them, but you gotta walk you know, a long time possibly. And you gotta find hills and you have to find things to boost up their strength. Well, water therapy, like with our underwater treadmill is set up so that it, imagine a plexiglass chamber, rather large, maybe eight feet long and three feet wide. And you have, we have the dog step into there, we close the door, we turn on the water, which fills up from the bottom, and then you turn on the floor, the treadmill. Now, as the dog is walking, yes, they're walking, but they're pushing against the water. So that resistance therapy, it's like a person walking in the pool is a lot harder than just walking in, in air. Absolutely. What's really neat about this therapy though, and this, this device is some dogs, maybe they're overweight, they can't walk that far because they're overweight. Maybe they're older and they're a little bit weaker so they can't walk that far. Of course, they're now getting overweight or gaining weight, losing muscle tone. We can adjust the height of the water to provide a little bit of buoyancy so it's taking off some of their weight and then turn on the floor. So now they still have to walk, but they don't have to do all the work. It's not swimming. Swimming is a good exercise too, cardiovascular, but if you watch dogs swim, they're paddling with the front and they can cheat with the back legs if they want. They can just drag them or kick every once in a while, whereas yeah. when they're walking, they have to walk, um, and, you know, because the floor is moving and we can adjust the speed, we can adjust the height, um, they can, we, we could have them face either way because it goes forwards and backwards. When the session is finished, the water is pulled back out into our storage tank through the filters and then the dogs are let out, dried off, and that's how the process goes. The water is monitored, you know, for pH and chlorine levels and things of this sort, filtered, warmed. It's not a room temperature because that would be a pretty chilly 70 degrees. 
Um, so it's up in the 80s, and that seems just about right for most dogs. They feel comfortable with it. We've had quite a few that have started with that and are really showing some promise. Um, one did well with physical therapy, and it was just that extra little bit that the treadmill was able to bring to it that gave him that extra 5%. So now he's almost back to where he was. He's a search and rescue dog, so he's almost back to where he was before. Oh. Uh, it just shows um, treadmill alone can be beneficial. When they've had these knee surgeries, the first thing the surgeon's going to say is you got to get some rehab. Some of it is stretching and walking, but think about that. If you can get them into the water initially with a little more water, so they're not as heavy, if you will, because of the buoyancy of the water, and yet they're pushing against the water. So you still get the resistance work too. As they improve, you'll lower the water level, maybe three quarters of the way up the thigh equivalent. Now they're, now they're just kind of working against the water. That's gonna really bring that strength back again, keep the back limber um, and just, you know, it's a good car, a bit of a cardiovascular workout as well. Typically a session would be walking for a few minutes, resting a few minutes, walking a few minutes, resting, building up to the level that they can handle. Thank you, that, that's fascinating. Um... Oh, I didn't want to forget because we both have mutual client with bunnies. So you see bunnies as well. And I, I'm wondering what other small animals you, you, know, you can help with. You know? Right. So since we don't actually do any diagnostic medicine here, and even when I was in general practice, I never did bunnies or exotics because that's, that's a whole nother world. Yeah. Um, we do see uh, some bunnies here for mobility problems. Okay. Generally, they've been, again, their regular vet has helped them determine that's what's going on. Usually radiographs have been done. Even some uh, one of our uh, clinics in our area can even do um, uh, CAT scans for, for bunnies and exotics, which is amazing. Uh, but radiographs, there many times are on medications as anti-inflammatories, um, but still they have some back tension too. And most of that's in the back end because they're bunnies. Yeah. They're, they're relying on those back legs. They don't walk so well, they need to hop. And when they walk, it really puts a strain on their back. So we have found also for those that are um, amenable to it, if you will, um, acupuncture in those cases have been very helpful. Um, I have a lead on a vet in the Midwest who uses herbal medicines with bunnies. So I need to reach out to her to see, is this appropriate with some of these cases? Maybe we can help an even broader array of, the, of that species, uh, of, that, of that type of animal to try to improve their health. But on the mobility, again, the vast majority improve. People will often ask, and here, this usually comes up with cats, is can you do acupuncture in cats? You can. And the answer is some. Oh, Depends some. on the cat. Okay. You know, they're cats after all. You do it only if they allow it. But again, minimal restraint, gentle handling, very small needles. I do work with a fair amount of cats, and they've done well too. Again, mobility problems predominantly, uh, back tension. As cats age, the most common thing we see is kidney disease. Interestingly, acupuncture can be very helpful for kidney disease in older cats. Ah. Number one, some of them are getting some back tension too. And I think part of the kidney disease syndrome is that the nerves to the kidney from the spinal cord are being pinched because of the back tension. Because our nerves don't just go to our muscles, they go to our organs. The organs are sending messages back to the spinal cord for integration. And that's how the system talks to itself is mainly through the nervous system. So relaxing the back muscles, particularly in the areas where the nerves come off the spinal cord, which is right over the kidney. We not only improve back end strength and comfort for some of these guys, but we actually have seen improved kidney function. They still have age-related kidney changes, so but we're getting improved function and then lower rate of decline. We're all on the downhill slide in the big picture, but we can slow down that rate of change. And doesn't everybody want that? Yeah, <laughs> you know? You we know it's inevitable, but not you today, want to do as well not as you tomorrow. Can, as long as you can, right? Got it. You got it. Okay. Uh, thank, thank you so much, Dr. Cosen. I appreciate you taking the time. Mary Beth, thanks for having me. I love talking about this, as you can tell. And it's just, we're okay. really happy having you with us here. I think it's a great service. And as you'd imagine, we may be about the only place you could work comfortably <laughs> so far. That's Many true. Guys, Thank you. I know. I, I feel it's a great privilege to be shocked. part of the team. They're, they're not shocked when they hear we have a communicator here. So that's, that's right. Wonderful. All right. All right. Thanks. Mm -hmm.